and welcome back to my channel. My name's Alice May and today I'm going to be chatting you through some of my favourite beginner friendly sewing patterns. So I was inspired to do this from watching the Great British Sewing Bee because I think they make it look unnecessarily difficult to start sewing and I'm really concerned that it might actually put people off wanting to sew. And so I just thought I would chat to you about the patterns that I love and that I think would be really good ones to start with so you can get hop into sewing and really get make the most of it and um, make patterns that actually reflect your style. One of the biggest mistakes that sewists can do when they first start out is to make something that they just wouldn't wear anyway and that was definitely what I did. I made a shift dress, the, I made the Sew Over Ultimate Shift Dress which is a good beginner friendly pattern but looks horrible on me. It literally looks like a sack. It's, yeah, it's not flattering at all. Um, cause I need something that is more this shape and that is very much this shape. So if you're kind of, you like, uh, this is, this is actually probably an extra little, uh, um, pattern in here, which isn't actually one of the official pattern recommendations, but that one is a good one to start with if you do like shift dresses. But let's get started with the ones that I actually loved making um, and I love wearing. So my first one is the Clio dress. Now you'll have heard me speaking about this before. This is a dress that I really always recommend to uh, newbie sewists because it looks like something you could buy on High Street and I think it's really really good to make something that you actually would want to wear and for people to say oh I really like that where would you get it and you would be like I made it and they'll be like no I thought it was top shop. Uh, <laughs> so that is uh, recommendation number one. I have made three of these. This is the very first one I made, um, which I made with some corduroy from Sewisfaction. So corduroy is a really good thing to start with if you haven't sewn before because the pile actually means that it sticks together a little bit better and it doesn't slip as much. Um, so it is has a pocket at the front um, and you can put pockets down here and on the back as well but I didn't for this one my exposure is going to go crazy um, it has little buckles which you hammer on um, these straps are probably actually the only bit that's really fiddly and that is um, just because you have to when you're attaching them here you have to make sure you're not catching them in it um, in the stitching. Um, it comes in two lengths, so I made mine the mini length. One version I did for the back pockets as well, but the other versions I've only just done the front pocket and I find that's fine. I haven't actually ironed this, I haven't ironed any of these. Sorry guys, you're going to be seeing these all in their crumpled glory. I made this um, about a year and a half ago and I've worn it so many times I actually got a hole in it. On the back, where is it? Corduroy, even though it is a great fabric, it isn't actually that hard wearing. Um, so you'd, I d would recommend only really wash it if you absolutely have to, if it's actually dirty, which is kind of actually what you should be doing with all your clothes, really. But I've sort of patched this up. There you go. You can just about see um, that. Um, that is where I got a hole in it. I'm not entirely sure how. I can't remember, but I just put a little bit of interfacing on the back. And then I just stitch it up and it's fine. My second recommendation is more if you want something that's more vintage feel and that is the Butterick 6318 and this says on the top it is easy somewhere does it no it says on the back that it's easy I made this in cotton as well and cotton is a great fabric to start out with because it's really reliable it doesn't shift um, or stretch, unless you buy stretch cotton, which don't bother for this pattern, you don't need it. The only thing I will say about this pattern is read the finished garment measurements and go off those as opposed to the size measurements. You may find that you are a different size in this by about two sizes um, between the finished garment measurements and the actual measurements. You find them on the finished garment ones on the pattern that pieces itself. Um, so like, just have a look at where the bust line is and the waistline is and measure stuff from there because they put a lot of ease in this pattern. So I actually sized down two sizes when I made this from what the, they said. 
I made it in a seersucker cotton, which is a sort of textured cotton. So it's got these little flamingos on it and it is stripy. So I made this for a wedding. Um, actually, no, I didn't. I made it for the New Craft House Summer Party, which if you're in London and you are a sewer, then um, do follow New Craft House on Instagram. And when they announce their party, then I do really recommend going. It's how I met um, a lot of my sewing friends. So this has a little uh, slash neckline almost. Um, it's quite straight across the front. It has an invisible zip that isn't invisible because I did this when I was a beginner and um, you can see it, but it doesn't matter. Just get a zip which kind of goes and it's fine. Um, it has grown on sleeves and now this is where the sleeves um, aren't the same pattern piece as the top bit. So you can see there's no seam line there. That means it is really, really simple to sew because you don't have to set in any sleeves. So you literally have one, two, three, four, five main pieces and then you have the ties. The ties, you pop into the sides, you don't have to do the ties. If you are doing these and you want them to tie in a bow in the back, I would recommend extending them quite a lot because they're actually not that long. And if I make this again, then I'd definitely extend them um, to probably by about another two thirds of what it already is uh, so that you can tighten a bow because at the moment it only ties in a knot at my back um, and I do prefer the bow look. This has a gathered skirt which some people say is tricky. I don't think it really is. If you just do two lines of gathering and then take it easy then it's fine. So it has a gathered skirt. It is supposed to be less gathered at the front than at the back and at the sides. Um, and that is so that it's more flattering. And other than this, it does not matter when you're starting out if things don't align and if you don't pattern match and all that kind of stuff. Have a look at some of your ready to wear clothes. I bet like hardly any of them actually pattern match. If you're wanting something that is a little bit more of uh, an evening dress, a little bit more risque, then I recommend the Vogue um, 9253 pattern. This um, is quite similar in construction actually to the Butterick one, but it has a very different look to it. So it's got a really low plunge. Um, I made this version, but I actually took it up a lot because I am short. Um, but I'm not even that short actually. I'm five foot four and I took it up by at least half a foot, um, possibly. And then I did a deep hem anyway. So these patterns are made for people who are tall. <laughs> um, but I really like it. I didn't do the tie waist because I didn't like, I don't actually really like tie waists that are at the front. Um, I just I think they're just extra faff and they're not really my kind of style. But I made it also out of a cotton. So this is a quilting cotton and it's not done up. So give me a sec. There we go. Um, this is a quilting cotton. Now, quilting cottons in general, probably wouldn't recommend really sewing with them apart from for the right pattern. So this pattern really works in a nice quilting cotton because this is, oh my gosh, this is so soft. It's just like butter. It's amazing. Um, this, because it's got, uh, it's a dress with, it's got the big sleeves, you want quite a lot of structure to it. Well, I did anyway. Um, more than you would get the, with a rayon. With a rayon you'd get have a very different look to what it was like. Rayon, how can I describe rayon if you don't know it? If you feel a man's, um, shirt that's not one of the really crisp shirts one of the ones that's like from zara somewhere like that like more fashionable ones that's probably rayon um so it's sometimes called viscous as well um so this also has the grown on sleeve um so it has a really low plunge at the front uh i didn't make it higher at all because i quite like that um it has a uh, threads I haven't finished this properly. I rarely finish things properly. Um, and it has a, this is a little bit of an improvement on my last zip. This is more invisible. And so you can see that this pattern I probably made about two months after that one. And it's already like, the zip is already a bit better. Um, the finish is a bit better. The sleeves are a little bit neater. Um, it's all about just baby steps, really. The front comes in two sections. 
So this panel and this panel and then the back panels are also two panels. This pattern has pockets! I nearly forgot to say. Um, the last one did too as well, actually. Um, it has really, really good size pockets. They're so good. Where's my uh, other one? Oh, I'm wearing it. I don't actually have this one printed out. Um, this is the ED top from So Over It. Now, jersey is something that some people um, say, and actually on Great British Sewing Bee, they made jersey look really difficult. It is not difficult. You do not need an overlocker. Um, I would recommend a stretch needle, but if you don't have one, then just do it with a normal needle. You just, it will still hold together. Um, this is the ED top. It is from the Work to Weekend ebook from So Over It. And I know that is quite expensive, but there are five patterns within it. It's £25, so it is £5 pattern, which is good value. And the other patterns are ones that are more like builders, so. You may only sew the ED at first, but then you might get to a stage where you're like, actually, no, I really want to sew the cape dress or the Camille jumpsuit. So this is, it's got three quarter length sleeves. Um, it sits, I shortened it because I always wear it tucked in. So it's, um, it actually sits kind of around this length, but I always shorten things. Um, and it's got a boat neckline, I think this is called. Um, next time I am going to take it in a little bit further just so that it covers my bra strap a little bit more but I don't mind that it, covers, it only that it shows a little bit. Uh, but it's four pieces, that's it. So there you have it, those are my five recommendations for- no they're not! They are not! I forgot one! And that is if you do not want to start with dressmaking, if you have literally never sewn anything on your life before, you have never used a sewing machine before, may I recommend the Stitch Sisters Cushion Masterclass. They do a little video of how to make a cushion and they do so they have some really, really helpful tips in there um, if you're a beginner sewist. If you are um, a little bit more experienced and they also have options to put piping in it. Now that is all my five pattern recommendations. Um, I hope you liked this video. If you did, then um, please subscribe and give it a like. Or um, And if you have recommendations for other sewers on what would be really good patterns, uh, beginner friendly patterns, then please do leave them below. I'll do a blog post with a few other beginner friendly patterns in there um, for you to look at and I will link that below too. And I think that's everything. Okay, have a wonderful weekend guys. Nope, have a wonderful week guys. If this goes up on Sundays. Hope you had a wonderful weekend and I will see you again soon. Bye bye!